This is my life now. Hi, Scizorin here, and the Atlas map passives have been updated, and we know exactly what they're going to be now. So I wanted to make a quick video talking about what are going to be my choices for my Atlas passives, and uh, to help you guys a little bit with how to figure that out. So we're going to start with Glenite Cairns, and in my opinion here, it's a very, very clear choice that this is where we are going to be running Incursion. Incursion is getting a large buff, and it's going to be able to be something you can sell on Trade League when you've, like, finished a temple. So really, really nice, and it's going to be easy to upgrade your temples in this region. So you're going to take Contested Development, and that's where I would put my first two points. Then after that, I would most likely go for the Legion nodes, and I would take Face to Face first, and then High Value Targets after that. Next up, we have Friend of the Family, and personally, I think Kadir is still going to be really, really good, even after the nerf. Obviously, it was nerfed because it was completely busted in Ritually, with the five times more likely. Basically means that Kadira would roll through his item pool and choose the rarest item, but he would roll five times. Now he's still rolling three times. I played around like 800, maybe 900 hours of Ritual, and I got eight or nine Chevron's wrappings, three Taste of Hates, several impulses and like really really good uh, and Kadir has more stuff that he offers now as well to include newer uniques so Kadir is definitely something I want and will be my first two points after that I'm going to go for the delirium nodes and I'm going to be taking compulsive hoarder first if you're a big fan of metamorph that is an option as well but I play on hardcore league and my character enjoys staying above one life next up we have home sweet home Haywork Hamlet did not really get nerfed and only just is the best region. It has several good maps and it's a really, really beautiful one. For both solo cell phone and for trade, it is just such an incredibly powerful region. I'm most likely going to take the Essence nodes first. Essence has obviously got a buff and uh, they're just really, really good for early game crafting. So my first two points is going to go into grabbing Amplified. And then for my next two points, I would probably be taking Nature's Favor and then the last point in Wild Fruit. Now, especially for softcore and hardcore trade league, later in the league, the new ritual nodes might be really good with giving you additional rerolls and stuff like that. So somewhere like maybe a week or two into the league, that could be really cool to experiment with as well, especially in seeing there might be some people starting with it and we'll get some feedback from them on how good it actually has been. But uh, especially early league, Essence is amazing. Lyra Arthane. This region is, in my opinion, pretty trash. However, they have like said that they've moved a lot of the Blight Oils away so that you actively do have to run more Blight now. You can't just grab it from like Delirium as easily. You can't grab it from Heist as easily. So we might actually have to run tier 13 to 16 Blights to get our Golden Oils. So Epidemiology sounds like a pretty good choice for this. And uh, other than that, I would probably take Inside Job just because if I'm running maps here, I might as well have a tiny chance of getting a fully revealed blueprint. Now, with that being said, I did run maps in this region in Ritual and I didn't get a single fully revealed one. Taking one point in Animal Companion to get yourself more bestiary missions is really, really good. And natural selection, and especially a little later in the league when you're able to roll watchstones for the uh, beast in the area is more likely to be a less common variant that stacks with the node in Lyra Thane. So if you are able to stack these, that was really, really good in Ritual and hopefully really good in 3.14 as well. Lex Proxima, not really my favorite region because if I'm really hunting for Harvest, I'm going to be doing that in Haywork Hamlet. However, the, uh, the Harvest nodes here have been basically buffed a little bit and uh, there's no reason to take Bountiful Harvest. And I also probably would not be even taking the Traveling node that does increase the chance of Harvest spawning. But especially since Delve has seen a buff here, I think it's going to be pretty worth to take the Delve nodes here and then Delve sounds like it's going to have a pretty big reward in the first two 300 levels. Turns end. I'm a little unsure what they've done to Exotic Goods because they said that they've buffed it but it's already insane and specifically the wording they used in the manifesto is that they've increased the reward or made it better and buffed it. Um, however in the patch notes they've said that they've made the drop pool wider. Uh, the, the, the reason that I'm worried about this is I dropped a large, large amount of six things. I think in all of Ritual League, I got over 40, maybe 56 things from this node. Um, and most of them I would just vendor from Divines because I had so many six things that I didn't really need to keep them. 
Um, but I must have had over 30, maybe 35 actual armors, like chess pieces. And these are not corrupted. They're just really good. So um, I'm a little bit worried if it actually is a buff when it was already that insane. If it is, then it's definitely insane. But also, especially for solo cell phone, it dropped really good things like hordes of silver coins, um, loads of sextants, and it was just really, really good and added up very quickly. Other than that, Great Migration is a really cool choice. I always really, really enjoyed getting a horde of red beasts and yellow beasts like swarming around the map. It was always very cool whenever it procced. Um, and I quite like, I, I ran that a lot and I ended up getting a lot of good beasts. So I would recommend that. Obviously, the uh, big game notable is uh, nerfed a little bit. But uh, it should still be a pretty solid choice. Um, the Underground Kingdom and the, the Abyssal nodes are very exciting. But so are the uh, Delirium nodes. I am probably going to have a very, very hard choice between taking that which you seek. Just to get a few more Delirium mirrors. But also the idea of taking Underground uh, Kingdom. Just to get more Abyssal Depths and stuff like that. Does sound pretty nice. Because uh, Abyss is also getting a buff this league. So at least this is a pretty stacked region with some hard choices. Baldos Rest, home of the Harbingers. Um, yeah, that's it's gonna be fine, right? Right? Honestly, Valdos Rest and everything in it is kind of bad to begin with, and it's a region that, in my opinion, the only thing worth running for is pretty much Diplomatic's Escort, aside from the Betrayal Notes. So, I still think it is probably going to be worth taking Diplomatic Escort just to get some additional Ancient Orbs, but it is going to most likely be a shadow of its former self. And I think we're going to see a lot of reactions of streamers laughing when they get there. But we don't know for sure. That's just my prediction. I could and hope that I am wrong. Um, but either way, obviously it was way too strong in Ritual. It's going to be interesting to see what they've done. Um, the two most likely choices, in my opinion, is A. Um, it's literally just a Harbinger with the crown that drops slightly better loot. Uh, and that one is guaranteed each time. Um, that would be kind of sad, but I would also understand it, I guess. But uh, the other option is that it's literally the Night King from uh, the Harbinger map. And it will take quite a while to kill all the waves. And yeah, I, I, those are the two most likely options in my opinion, but definitely worth experimenting with. Other than that, the Betrayal ones, uh, I played with them last league and they're really, really good. As for the last point, I don't know. Roll the dice. Uh, yeah, no idea. And finally, New Vestir, which was such a beautiful and amazing region with uh, with Legion. But, like this was the only region I would bother killing Legion encounters in. Uh, I would completely skip it in every other region. That is no longer going to be the case. I am now most likely going to do Legion in pretty much every time I encounter it. Um, the Legion nodes are still good here, but the whole like protracted battle thing, I don't really like to node. I definitely won't be using points on that. Emblematic is great, however, and really, really exciting. Whenever it procs and you get a full emblem, that's always really, really cool. The Total Anarchy and Rogue Trader, I haven't tried it, obviously, and uh, I I loved it in Tempest because that had the same mechanic where areas would have 20 Rogue Exiles. Now, the difference is in Tempest, it was basically guaranteed in the area for an hour and you could farm it over and over again, which was insanely powerful. Whereas now, with this thing, it is a 10% chance so, you know, it is only going to be there once every 10 maps on average. Um, and I also don't know how good the Rogue Trader is, but I do kind of want to experiment with it. The Abyssal Army or Votive Horde nodes are pretty cool as well. And Abyss is obviously getting a buff. And the cool thing in Ritual about the, the Votive Horde was that that was actually 100%. So I was very surprised to see that they were changing it to 20. Because do they know? Like... It didn't really seem in the past, it was like they know that it was 100% in all of Ritual League. Um, which I, I thought it was just a typo that it was missing a zero. Because every time you did one, sure enough, you got an item with an Abyssal Socket in it. So, uh, a little bit interesting. Maybe it's 200% now and they have two Abyssal Sockets. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But either way, that is probably going to be the main choice there. And again, these are just my opinions of what I feel is the best for me. I'm going to most likely be playing Hardcore Trade League, but I think it would probably be very similar choices no matter what league I'd be playing. So I hope these videos help you and that you have the best time in Ultimatum League. Good luck. Hope you find a lot of good items. And if you have any questions, I'm going to be live on Twitch every day. Sub if you like the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.